Hi, my name is Pandora and welcome to this quick video in response to an email question I received asking how to cut out Lettering Delights characters with Inkscape using SignCut uh, with a digital cutter. So this is hopefully a quick video. I'm just going to bring up the Layers palette because I find that a really useful thing to have around. So if I press Control and Shift and L my layers palette's going to open up. Yours may open up docked over here. I've detached mine and you can do that by simply clicking and dragging in the title just so I can bring it into the center of the video more easily and you'll be able to see more easily what I'm up to. I actually have already have two layers. I have and will shortly complete a video on how to create a template for Inkscape with registration layer already in it, simply to stop myself resizing it every time. So I have the registration layer already, and this layer is layer one, is where all this text is. So that I know what I'm up to, I always rename my layers, and you do that by pointing at it, and if it comes up blue like that, all you do is double click, and you can simply highlight it, and I'm going to call this my text layer, so I know what it is. I'm going to use the plus button here to create myself a new layer and I'm going to call this image. Now because I don't need these two at the moment I'm going to lock the text layer so I can't do it. The registration layer is already locked and this prevents me moving anything by accident. So because I don't need them at the moment I'm going to switch the text layer off and leave the registration layer on so I can see it. I'll just move that across there. Now. What I want to do is import a couple of the lettering delights. So if I go to File and I click on Import, I have a couple of new files here. Um, this one's called Chilling and it seems to be all about summer drinks. That cocktail seems like a really good idea sometimes. It is well, almost 9 o'clock at night here. So if I click on Open, that will put it onto the page. And if I go to Import and go up, a couple, I can get to another file that I've got called Bloom Craze, and let's pick that one and say open, and let's pick another one just for fun. And somewhere here there is, here it is, um, a rainbow. So here we are. So we've got three items on the page, and this is our image layer. We know that because this is showing us that's the image layer that we're on. How do we highlight them so we can do print and cut? Well, it's so easy, it's quite scary. Um, if you click on the bucket tool, which is over here, it's the one, two, three, four, fifth one up from the bottom. It says fill bounded area if you pointed it for long enough. So if I click on that, I get a bucket. Now, I have set mine, and up here it shows that I've got a stroke of one and a fill of none. And you can actually select these as you go along. All you do is simply click on over the image you want and what you may be able to see is now we've got a black line all the way around the edge of it. Again I'm going to click on this one we get a black line around the edge and I'll click on this one. And if I now get my selection tool and just move them apart slightly you can see what I now have is, let's just do them all the same way so it's obvious, So I have three images and three cutouts. Now what is interesting, and if you do want to cut out these pieces and you like a fan of paper piercing, um, if I just click on extensions, export and send to sign cut, you'll find that sign cut will happily cut out all of the different things. If I switch the black off, it, switch the black on, it will only switch the black. If I pick the white, there's not much there it seems. Here you may only just be able to see the outline of the glass, but I can go through all the colours. Well actually I don't want to cut them, I don't want to do this as paper piercing, so I'm just going to cancel this out of this. What I want to do is print and cut, and in order to do that I need to have them lined up. But again, as I said, I'm a huge fan of the layers palette, so before I do anything else I'm going to click on the plus sign, and I'm going to bring up another layer, create another layer, and I'm going to call this my cutting layer. Okay, so just make this a bit bigger, 
So you can see I've got my registration layer, I can switch those on and off. I've got the text layer, which I don't want at the moment, and I've locked both of those so I can't possibly change them by accident. Now I've got my image layer and I've got my cutting layer, except if I switch the image layer off, you can see everything disappears. And what I actually want is I want these outlines on the cutting layer. So if I select the, the each in turn, if I just click on it, hold the shift key down, click on the second, and click on the third, a quick way to move them all is to come up to the layer drop down menu, click move selection to layer above. And if you want to check to see if you've actually managed it, the simplest way is to come over and switch the eye off. If they disappeared, you've done it. So that's fine, except if we do print and cut now, it's going to cut out up here and the actual image is here. So how do we solve that? Well, let's just close that one for a second and bring up our align and distribute. And let's make this a wee bit bigger so we can see it a bit better. You can resize these windows. Um, lots of things can be resized in Inkscape, it's quite useful. So here we have our align and distribute. Now, there are various options here. You can have the first selected, the biggest object, the smallest object, the page, drawing, selection, whatever. I'm going to use last selected. So if I click on this outline of my rainbow, hold my shift key down and click on the colored image, then I'm going to use my center objects horizontally and then center them vertically. So you can see they're perfectly aligned. Going to do the same thing with these two. And because it's last selected, if I wanted to move it up, I could change that while they're still selected, say first selected. And then if I center it horizontally and vertically, again, they're aligned. And if I select this one and this one, and do the same thing, center them horizontally and vertically, you can now see that they're all aligned very clearly. If I bring back my layers palette and I cut off my switch off my cutting layer, you can see that the outline has disappeared. If I switch it back on, you can see it now. Again, I can switch the image on and the image off. So what you want to do at this point is just to check something. And one of the things that's um, really important is when you're using these registration marks, can you see that this image is actually looks like it's going to cross this line? It's really important that you have no, that the images are contained within the box created by these crosshairs on the registration marks. If you're not sure, you can point at the ruler, click and drag in a guideline and just simply line it up and instantly you can see I'm right. This is actually going to be an issue. So I'm going to click and drag an Im imaginary box and just move it across. And you can stack as many of these images on a page as you'd like. You can stack them at the bottom, at the top, it doesn't really matter, sign cut won't really care. So again, let's to get rid of this, you can point at it, click and drag, and it'll disappear. If you just want to stop at that point, you can see that that's okay too. There's nothing going to do that. You can bring them in from the top. These, these rulers are really useful when you're actually trying to draw things or line things up because you can use them. And there is a snap to ruler, which I'm not going to go into now, but there's lots of ways that you can use them that are very useful. And as I say, you click and drag, or either way to bring them in or to get rid of them. So in order now to print and cut these um, objects, what I would do first of all is I would send them to print. So before sending it to print, you do have a couple of things you must do. One of the things you must do is check that you can see the registration marks. At the moment, they're not visible, so I'm going to switch them back on by clicking on my eye. And also, I've got to decide, do I want this black line around the images? I've decided I don't, so I'm going to switch off my cutting layer so I just have the images without the extra black line around them. I now send this off to my printer and then place it on my mat. Once you've done all of that, you want to then decide to send it to your cutter. What you need to know now is switch off the image, but open up the cutting file. We don't need the registration layer, so I'm going to switch that off. And then I'm going to go extensions, export, center sign cut, and here is what it's going to cut out. 
So, in order to cut it out using print and cut, you will need to go to special cutting and simple contour cut. And this dialog box will appear. And it says move a laser to the center of the rightmost registration mark, then click next. Now, it's really important, a bit like Scal, that you use these buttons to push the laser this way, that way, and the other way. Um, I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to cancel out of that. One of the things that's worthwhile noticing is up here there is a little um, dial sorry, diagram of your cutter. So the A symbol indicates the bottom left-hand corner of the working area. So in my case, that would be down here. This would need to be, this area here, would need to be where I set my origin point and where the A equivalent to the A in that dialog box. I'm just going to close out and come back to here. So I hope that answers the question. Um, a bit longer than I anticipated, but there's quite a lot of detail there, I suppose. Anyway, hope you found it helpful. If you do have any other requests, please feel free to email me at myrequest at btinternet.com and I hope you have a great day.